So where do we start? That's a good question, because I'm probably not going to finish it all in one setting. So most likely what, what I'll choose is I'll choose the worst section, number one, and then a section I can finish. So like right here, I can finish this section 100%. Even if I combine both of those sections and that one shingle up there, this section right here, I can complete. Then it looks like over there, those two sections, they, they may be separate, they may be combined. I'll figure that out once I start taking them apart. And then of course I've got all these one tabs. So the best thing to do is start in the most critical place first. And as you can see, I got tar paper showing here, which doesn't mean I'm leaking, but comparatively speaking, compared to all the other places, that's probably the worst one. And I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places with tar paper showing. Definitely where I want to go first. However, my first choice is the worst place first. So I think I'm going to tackle these four places and I'm going to do this one here first. So there we go. Okay, so the first step, I gotta take shingles out in order to be able to slip my shingles in. This roof is 17, 18 years old. It's just gonna be a couple of years before it gets replaced. So I'm not worried about replacing the whole shingle. You can replace the whole shingle if you want to. For instance, this is, you can see this is a clean edge here. This is a cut edge. Typically three tabs are called that for a reason because there's three tabs in a shingle. Here's a tab, here's a tab, here's a tab, here's the shingle, here. Here's a tab and right here for this shingle. One, two, three tabs. So I'll probably remove this tab because it's damaged. Now, one of the things you need to understand is that in order to remove shingles, first you have to remove the nails. Now you can just tear the shingles out, but that's not really a good way to do it because then you can't just slip your, your new ones right in. So I just want to show you a concept for you to understand. You can see this shingle right here goes all the way up to here. You can see that there's nails in and near the tar strip and there's nails in the top. The nails in the top are from the, sh the shingle above it. So essentially this shingle here goes all the way up to here. So if I want to take this shingle out, I've got to take nails out up here and under here in order to get this shingle out. So keep that in mind as I'm as I'm moving forward here. So I'm, I've just got to make sure and get the shingles out that are damaged. These have been here for six months. Hurricane Irma was six months ago and it's about time I get to fixing these shingles here. Now what I use is a flat bar. It's just an ordinary Maybe it's called a wonder bar. I like the, the clean, simple one with no bells and whistles, no curves, no nothing for shingles. It seems to do the trick. No bells and whistles or nothing. It seems to do the trick. You'll see in a moment. All right, so basically I'm looking for a tie-in. I've got a tie-in here. I've got a tie-in here. The only thing wrong with this situation is I've got some debris under here, which, which I will work out. Okay, I don't have a tie-in here. I'm going to rectify that momentarily. I've got to take this shingle out. So as I discussed previous, this shingle, I've got nails up here. So I've got to take, 
in order to get this shingle out I've got to take a row of nails out up here so in shingles it's easier to work from the top down because once you expose the top row you then expose the rows underneath so I'm gonna go ahead and do that first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get the tar strip loose now if this it, once it gets warm they, these it doesn't want to cooperate typically but a lot of times it'll just come right up and that's all you really want to do is get it loose that's that tar strip is for wind uplift not for sealing the shingles it doesn't do that that is strictly for wind uplift all right I just realized I want to take this one out too so I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this one up because I'm gonna to have to pull a couple nails out there too all right so there we are I don't like to hit them back down because I'm going to be putting nails back in there and when I put nails back in there if there's already nails in there then the nail I'm putting in there doesn't want to go in so just a matter of getting all the nails out so as you can see in this case I'm not taking this one out this one is going to be salvaged but I am going to take this one out, so I'm going to cut it right here because I'm not really concerned about taking the whole shingle. You can do this. If you want to take the whole shingle, go ahead. All you have to do is take out two more tabs. Now, sometimes I'll get into it and not want to take the whole shingle, and I'll change my mind because I might find another rip. But currently, that's my thinking. I'm going to try to do it as clean as possible so you just have a, a small hole to deal with. Okay, so I got that. So essentially, when I take this one out, it should come right out once I get the nails from around it. Now this I'm not tying in. I'm going to replace the shingle so I'm not worried about taking it out as clean. But I will be getting the nails out. Now this one another, again, I'm going to only take the tab. So I'm going to go ahead and take the nails out before I forget. Because I will forget. And just do it one row at a time. It's only another few minutes just to try to cover all the bases. If you're doing this for yourself, then it really doesn't matter how long it takes as long as you don't have leaks afterwards. And that's the main thing you want to focus on. Another thing you want to consider is you want to make sure and get an area finished because now that I start taking these nails out, I've got holes. Before, I had nails and there wasn't water going through it. Now I've got holes. Water will go through that on the first time it rains. So make sure once you get started that you're able to finish this, this the area. That's why I kind of chose an area and I'm going to focus on this area until I finish it. Then I'll move on. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this shingle out here, this one tab. I've already got this nail out, this nail out. So now I gotta come up here and take, I can probably leave that nail in there. I've gotta take these two nails out here. And again, I wanna do it as clean as possible. This is the trick. 
cutting it straight. So I got a hook blade. I'm gonna reach up under there. Now I'm gonna take another nail out here, to get some space. So I can put it back just as well. I'm gonna reach up under there where the shingle ends and I'm gonna turn my hook blade and bring it down. See, I ripped the shingle a little bit, so when I put them back, when I put the new shingle back, I'm gonna use a little roofing cement, and that should solve that problem. All right, so I'm basically tied in. I got my tie in here to here. I got one tab I'm gonna take out here, one tab I'm gonna take out here, one tab I'm gonna take out here. And then I'm ready to put shingles back after I clean it up. Here we go. See, that nail was crooked. Surprised it wasn't leaking. All right. Now you can draw a line on the shingle if you need to. To make sure that you cut it nice and straight. Once you do it a half a million times, you can cut it straight. Okay. So I've got a finished edge here. edge here so this one's going to come right out. Okay, we're going to get those nails out. Oops, one more right here. Also cut backwards like that might get it a little bit straighter. Now again, hitting these nails back down, you can do that, but when you put nails back in, you're more apt to hit the nail head because you're basically putting them back in just about the same spot. Especially if you did the work to begin with. hammer for this once you get them once you get them out once you get the shingles out the claw hammer might work a little bit better whatever you got in your hand really okay I got See, I got these couple of nails here. I'm gonna go ahead and take those out. Got another one right here. And again, you can leave them in, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. All right. All right. So let's check it over. All I gotta do now is kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna go get a whisk broom for that purpose. Oop, got a nail I missed here. So I'm 100% on this section taking the shingles out. So, just to reiterate, now I've got holes. So I've got to finish this right now and get it closed up. Now if for some reason you 
can't finish and you've got to maybe go somewhere like to lunch put a spot of roof cement on these holes just put a roof spot of roof cement on each one as long as you don't have any tears in the 30 pound you should be okay or 15 pound whatever you use in your area now these holes under here same thing but then you're gonna have to work with some roof cement on your on your hands I'm just doing this for to show you how many holes are in there the bunch all right so here we are got a little broom here just want to get rid of the, the dust and debris oh missed a nail bound to happen now keep in mind this has been open for six months so not to mention what the wind blew under blew under it during the hurricane so you just want them flat as long as there's nothing really bucking they'll be okay get rid of that now okay so now I'm not going to put down roof cement a lot until I'm in my finishing stages. But anything I don't like, I can go ahead and take care of it now. I got this open. So this is basically a two tab. This is basically a two tab scenario. We got to get rid of that. That dust will fall down. This is only a 512, so it's not too steep. I'm staying up here pretty good, but it can definitely get slippery if you're not careful. All right, so I've got my new shingles here. So I'm just going to cut a two tab. Should be able to fit right in there. Wow, those are bright compared to the old shingles. They've been there for a while. Again, it's 18 years old, so they're 25 year shingles. So here in the next year or two, be considering putting a new roof up here. But for right now, it's going to do the trick. Three tabs. So I'm just putting in a full shingle. Split the difference. Might be open just a little bit. I'm going to line up the bottoms. Not necessarily the tops because as you can see, the old shingles either shrunk or they're just a little bit different size, which is not uncommon. We can, we can put some roofing cement on that if, if it's that bothersome. Again, just taking my time. Now right here you can see I've got a a hole that I'm not going to put a nail back in. I'm going to put roofing cement on that. But again, I'm going to wait until I'm finished. I'm going to go over this whole area and I'm just going to put dabs of roofing cement where I feel like I need them. All right, looks like I got another three tab scenario here, just a full shingle. Not entirely necessary to have a gun but having a gun is definitely uh, gonna be quicker but you gotta also know how to use the thing okay it's looking like I got four tabs here so what I want to do in this case is I want to kind of line up everything before I go to nail it so I'm gonna oh, I already got a tab cut here look at that that way I get my shingle nice and straight which is somewhat important so now I got my row straight across here. I'm going to put my foot here. Now I can put my hand here, put a nail here. So now I've pinned it. So I can go ahead and pin this. Then I can go ahead and pin this. Just give it a double check. Now I can get my other side pin. Then I can nail it off. Somebody was had a gun when they were 
installing this, and they went to town. Quicker is better. Not always. Okay, so I got something going, hanging me up there. paper. So there's a roll of paper right there where I'm putting that in. Okay, now I need a tab. So because I've got four tabs. Okay. Now you could have sealed all those holes with some roofing cement if you wanted to. It's not necessary because water doesn't get past the shingles. But if you want overkill, that would have been it. Alright, so again, I'm going to step on it. I'm going to nail one of them. Get the other one nailed. And just keep on trucking. As you can see, we're almost done with this particular section. need to nail, again, nail this up here, and I have a couple of shingles or nails out up here, so I need a tab. Slip it in here. So I'm just going to continue on. And here's I've got two holes. You don't really want to nail in that hole because then you're not doing anything, even though it's going to leave a hole. four shingles or four nails in a shingle so you see me putting six nails that's because in our area it's six nails Basically, this section is finished. I've got it all nailed off. The only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some roof cement. I'm going to fill these holes that I left in the shingle with roof cement, and these shingles that I that I pulled up, these tabs that I used my flat bar to get up, I'm going to just put a little roof cement just to give it some wind resistance. But I can do the same thing when I seal the hole, I'm also giving, putting some of that, some of that back. In this case, I'm not necessarily sealing for leaks as I have in the past. However, since I've already got the tab up and I've got the roofing cement in my hand, anytime I get to a seam such as that, this one, I'm going to go ahead and seal the seam. I might as well since I've already got my roof cement. And once you put roof cement on shingles, those aren't coming up when if you have to get here in the future you're not taking that apart from this shingle you're gonna have to take it all because that roof cement will bond this this uh, tar strip here is designed to come apart at some point to do just what we're doing okay whoa All right, 
right, so whenever I'm working with roof cement, I like to work from the top down because I don't want to step on my work. So I work from the top down. Now in other cases, I've worked from the bottom up only because I wanted to know where I'm at. So I'm not going to use much, but I can also use the shingle. I can also use the shingle as, as a workboard, if you will. I can just put some roof cement on there and then I can scrape it back off. So I'm just sealing those extra wide gaps which you don't necessarily have to, but more roof cement's always better. So, I just took care of the nails on that one. And what I'm doing is one row at a time. So as I'm coming through, I'm trying to finish one row at a time because as you can see, if you jump around, you're going to get lost. But, just got to take your time and go back. If you need to go back, go back. Just once I get down, I'm not wanting to get back up. All right, so I got that row, I got that row. Next is this row. So I'm on that last row there. See, I've got a tar strip there, so that's going to be okay. It's the row above. So I'm going to let those be there. It's just the older shingles I'm concerned with. Oh, looks like a... I heard quarter size dab used one time and somebody mistakenly thinks that that's how you seal shingles and it's not. It's for wind resistance. The only way you can seal them is to put roof cement underneath. Putting roof cement on top doesn't work because then there's nothing underneath and this will crack and let water right in underneath. Okay, I'm happy with that. So that's one section out of 15 other sections I got to work on. So I'm not going to bore you with the rest of them. I'll include you when I have to when I have to get up there on the ridge. When I have to get up there on the ridge and take apart that ridge vent right there.